Welcome back to another Construct Free video. In this video, I'll show you how to add water into your platform levels. So currently, I've got two big gaps that are a little a bit empty in my game. I want to fill in with some water. I want that water to have some properties and look and feel like actual water would expect to find in a video game. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is insert a new object, scroll down, and find a tiled background. I'm going to name this water. And all I'm going to do is fill this in with a color blue because we're going to use an effect to change the look of this water for us. So we don't really need to worry about having a pattern or a texture for this, at least at this stage. Once you've got it, take the water, put it into the gaps where you want the water to appear. Like so. And the same on the other sides. It doesn't matter if it overlaps in any way with your other sprites because what we're going to do is we're going to hide this and move this to the back. So again once we're done Z order, move this to the bottom layer just so it's hidden out of the way and it's not affecting any of the looks of your game. So there we go, we've got our water in place. Now we can start adding some effects to this to change the look of it. Before we add an effects, we're going to take this water and we're just going to clone it. We're just going to rename water to, to a thing called water mask and I'll explain what water mask is in just a bit when we get to that stage. On the water, right click, edit effects, and you're gonna add a new effect. Search for water, and you want water, not water background. Double click, you see this transforms our image straight away. Now if we run this straight away, the effect it gives is one that I'm not a big fan of. I think it's a bit too much. So what I like to do is tone a lot of these properties down. So we come down to the settings here. 2% for most of them, intensity I drop right down as well. So I drop a lot of these settings right down to very, very bare basics. And what I find is this just gives me something that looks a bit more natural, a bit more calming. If we go too much, you'll see that actually we lose a lot of what this tool is doing. So it gives us the curves, but we're not got any of the waves. So be careful how much you play around with this. So I'm going to change my frequency back to four and my intensity back up as well. And then play around with it until you find a look you're happy with. So for this one, I've got the waves, they're very calming, got a bit of reflectivity. Now if my character steps into the water, nothing changed at the moment, but what I want to do is actually make it so it appears my characters are underwater a bit more by changing what my character looks like when it enters the water. To do this, we've got our water mask. So what we need to do is right click on this, edit effects, and we're going to add a warp object mask. And this is going to warp our objects and the look of the object while it's underwater. Now for this one, what we're going to do is drag it out. You can see it's invisible, even though it's got the blue color, and that's just what the warp mask does. And for this one, it needs to remain on the top layer. So it's just about playing around to make sure it covers what we want it to cover and not covering too much else. So once you've done that, do the same for the other side. It is going to distort anything that's in it. So make sure that the top of it only goes to the top of the water. It doesn't go above. And let's see what this object mask does. So you see now our water looks very, very strange. And when our player goes into it, our player gets a similar sort of effect. Now this effect is far too much a bit over the top so we're going to scale it back again just like we did with our water so just click on the water mask and we've got some properties here and again I just scale these right back so I just halved all of these values that they were by default and then when we run it again you see we still get a bit of that under sort of water sort of mask look and as my character comes in we see the character move about so it appears that underwater Okay, so really, really nice and simple effect. Now what I want to do is add some properties to this water. So actually when the character is in it, the character is going to be much slower, but the trade-off is their gravity is going to be much lower. So let's implement that now. So in our event sheets, I'm going to add a brand new event. And what we're going to say, if player is overlapping another object, and that object being our water, Then we want to do is take our player and on the platform behaviors so you need the platform behavior already added for this what we're going to do is we're going to change two things so the first thing we're going to do is change max speeds 
So mine starts at 350, which is the default platform one. I'm going to put this down. Let's put this down to 150. Let's make it really slow just so we can see that effect come through. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do player and I'm going to set gravity. By default, this is 1500. So I'm going to halve this to 750. Again, so we can really see the effect. So you might want to play around these a bit more. Then what we're going to do is click on this whole condition. And what we're going to do is add and add else. What else does is if this is not true, it's going to run different code for us. And what we want to do is take these two values, copy and paste them, and then change them back to the default. So I know that mine's 330 by default and 1500. But if you want to find out yours, just click on your player and these are your default values that you've set up. Good, let's test this, make sure it's working. So here's my rough movement speed. If I just go back and forth, you can get an idea of how fast my player is. And then once we go into the water, we see really, really slow compared to before. We can bounce out the water. Now it takes one jump for me to hit this bit of grass here. And two jumps will just about get me over to the top of that. So if I go right down to the bottom of this water now, you'll see one jump takes me to the same point. Two jumps takes me out of it. It's a big, big difference from how much I'm able to jump here compared to jumping here. Okay, And you'll notice the moment that I step out of the water, my jump's not as high because the gravity effect's applied straight away as soon as I leave the water, which means I can't do any really crazy stuff with this. So that's how you set up water inside of Construct. Now it's just a little bit of a bonus. I want to show you what you can do in terms of some objects. I've got two objects here. So the first object called box sign. I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to place it just below my water slightly. Now, what this box has got on it is it's got two behaviors. It's got the sign behavior and the solid. And for the sign, what I want to do is actually make it so it's got a very long time on it. And the magnitude is really, really small. So just 10. What this does is this just moves it. So in this case, it's moving back and forth if you want it to move with the waves. Or you can set it to vertical if you want it to move up and down. So you see now it's moving up and down inside the water. Or you can add a second sign behavior and do both a vertical and horizontal. That's one thing that you can do. Another one I want to show you, which is why I've got a separate event already created. This one here, I'll explain this in just a sec. Is actually use the physics. Let's move this one out of the way and move it to the top. Let's take this one here. So this is a different one I've created. And this one makes use of the physics engine. So in terms of behaviors for this one, we've got solid and physics. Now, in order for this to work properly, your ground itself also has to have the physics behavior. And we also need to make sure that that's set to immovable. Now, your player cannot have the physics behavior as well. Now, what the physics behavior does when it's on the player, it will allow your player to push around the box. But the physics and the platform behaviors don't play kind with each other, which means you have to get rid of one. And obviously, this is a platform game, so getting rid of the platform behavior would be a big detriment to this game. So we've just got it on the box at the moment. If I run this, you'll see what it does. So you see my box is sitting and floating there. I can stand on it and I can bounce off it just like before. What makes this different compared to our other one that we've got here with sign is it will interact with our ground. It will also interact with other boxes of the same type. So if I've got this box here, I'm going to drop this box on top. You see they float around and they get affected by any other box, they also get affected by the land. So to implement something like this is a bit more complicated, but we've got our box with the following behaviors, solid and physics. In terms of the properties, the only thing I've really changed is the linear dampening to slow it down so it doesn't go crazy too much. And you might also want to up the angular dampening. This is how quickly it rotates or how quickly to stop rotating it is. So mine was rotating quite a lot, so if I up this, it would rotate a lot less. 
And then in our event sheet, we're going to say if it's overlapping the water at offset minus 30 in the Y. This means instead of checking the top of the collision, we move the whole collision box of water down by 30 when we do this check. This means we're checking when it's really in the water properly. Then what we want to do is we're going to apply impulse toward position. So this is this one here. Set the impulse to 0.2, which is really, really low. Then we're going to get move towards itself dot x, so it's moving towards its own x position, and then its own y position with minus 500. Now, the 500 is indicating how much it's going to bounce. The bigger this number, the less it's going to bounce. The smaller this number, it's going to bounce a lot more. If you've enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe, and follow for more great content. I'll see you in the next video.